Hello, uh, welcome back to the continuation of uh, the discussion on financing decisions for yes. APO 3193, Strategic Tax Management. Actually, medyo matagal bago ko na-realize na hindi na pala nagre-record yung uh, lecture. So itong part 2, supposedly isang buo lang siya but it's already part 2. And uh, medyo in-identify ko kung saan naputol yung uh, video. I will start from where I was abruptly uh, stopped by the Zoom application. Hindi ko alam kung bakit siya naputol. <clears throat> so dito ako na hinto. Parang natapos ko yung related taxpayers and then four and five. Uh, uh, to recap, meron tayo ditong ano, uh, situation kung saan yung interest expense ay hindi deductible. Abala na pinag-uusapan na uli ito. Kasi ang interest expense supposedly ay tax deductible. Meaning you can claim them as deduction from gross income uh, and they will result into a lower taxable net income and consequently, ultimately, they will result in a lower income tax due. Diba? Ang gusto natin mangyari ay paramihin sa possibly interest expense para tumaas pa lalo yung allowed deductions at bumaba yung taxable net income at yung tax due. But we were discussing here na may mga items of interest expense na hindi mo pwedeng ibawas from gross income. So nasa item number four na tayo. So if your client is engaged in the business of petroleum exploration, then it is not uh, really advisable. If you are look, uh, looking at a tax aspect, looking at the tax aspect of things, then it is really not advisable for you or for that petroleum ex exploration company to uh, offer that instrument. Diba? Hindi maganda uh, kung mamimili siya ng source of financing between debt and equity. I should not advise na mag-debt siya. Bakit? Kasi pag nagpunta siya sa debt financing, magkakaroon siya ng interest expense but for tax purposes, yung interest expense na yan ay hindi deductible. It cannot be claimed as an allowed deduction. So kung hindi mo siya makiklaim as allowed deductions, then um, walang effect yun sa tax due mo. Hindi niya, ma hindi niya mapapababa yung tax liability mo. Meaning, walang tax benefit. If the interest is incurred on indebtedness to finance petroleum exploration. And then, pinakahuli, ay interest treated as capital expenditures. Ito naman, there will be situations kung saan um, <clears throat> you will incur interest to acquire uh, a item of PPE, for example. Item of PPE. Uh, there will be situations kung saan yung interest mo na yan ay maaari mong ilagay or mag-form mag part siya nung cost nung, nung property na ina-acquire mo. In that, in that case, if the interest will form part of the cost of that um, asset na binili mo, then you are not allowed to claim as deduction yung interest expense na yan. <clears throat> but does not mean na wala ng tax benefit. Meron pa rin. Dahil yung interest expense ay nag-form part na nung cost nung equipment or nung property, kung ano man yan, nung asset na binili mo, then pinataas na yung depreciable value. At dahil pinataas, pinataas na yung depreciable value, tataas yung depreciation expense. And indirectly, magka-form part nung yung interest expense, yung interest dito sa number five, doon sa depreciation expense. So effectively, madedentak mo pa rin naman siya, but no longer as interest expense. Yun nga, dahil ang capital expenditures ay hindi deductible from gross income, kasi asset yan eh. Hindi mo siya pwede i-deduct as expense ang mangyayari, yung capital expenditure mo na yan, will be uh, recognized as an asset, including the interest. 
yung payment for interest mag form part ng value ng asset at dahil nga yan ay depreciable asset then you can claim the tax benefit by way of depreciation expense and not as interest expense. So dito ako nalungkot no? kasi medyo mahaba na yung discussion ko dito. Sa so, ako nalaman wala na pala yung recording. So dito sa portion ng problem na ito, na meron tayong dalawang kumpanya it yung mix nila. So, ang total nila, ano, ang total ng kanyang na finance, parahas lang 10 million. Although magkaiba sila ng pinagkunan. Kasi company E, nakapagpa-finance siya ng 10 million. 3 million coming from debt uh, financing, while 7 million came from equity financing. Company B was also able to uh, put up 10 million pesos pero magkaiba iba yung mix niya no ang mix niya is that debt 7 million and equity 3 million which is better sino na sa magandang sitwasyon in so far as stocks is concerned syempre din doon tayo mag-concentrate niyan again may mga tax consideration for the decisions made by company A and company B but since we are now in the computation part then we have to compute for the tax effect. <clears throat> okay. Di pa tayo ng Excel. Ang ginawa ko, no? ay napipaste, in-screenshot ko yung problem na punta siya dito sa Excel. Okay. No. Company A. And then company B. Let us uh, first determine the cost. Cost of debt. Again, sabi natin 10%. So that's 3 million. That's 0.1. Ano yung cost of debt? Interest. So si company A ay magbabayad na interest. Cost of debt for company B will be 700,000. Okay. Tax benefit. Meron ba? Meron. Let's fix it at 25%. Yun yung corporate income tax natin. Siyempre, mas mataas ang tax benefit ni B kasi mas mataas yung kanyang um, interest expense. Okay? So, cost of debt. Um, after tax. May tax benefit eh. Although kailangan niya magbayad ng 300,000, lumiit naman yung tax na kailangan niya bayaran by 75. So in effect, meron siyang cost of debt after tax na 225,000. Sa so company B, 525. Okay. Cost of equity. Okay, sabihin natin na ito ay ano na, 7, 10% din. Ano yung 7.9% by way of dividends? The 300,000. 300,000. Okay. Tax benefit. Wala. Because the declaration of dividends are non-taxable. Ay, non-taxable. Not deductible. So, cost of equity after tax will be the same. Kasi wala nga tax eh. So, kahit minus mo siyang ganyan. 300. So, ang gagawin natin, total natin. Total cost of debt and equity. For company A, 925. For company B, 825 lang. So, who is in a better position? Company B. Bakit? Kasi mas mababa yung cost. Yung after tax cost ng debt and equity, 825 lang. While for company A, 925. Mas mataas yung cost of debt and equity niya. Bakit? 
Pacific Company B, uh, most no, ng kanyang financing ay nasa debt. Eh, yung debt ay merong interest. Yung interest ay tax deductible. So kung mas malaki yung portion na mapupunta doon sa debt financing mo, mas malaki yung, uh, although syempre malaki, malaki naman yung cost of debt dyan, if you will consider the tax benefit, then it's you are in a better position. Okay. In fact, total mo yung tax benefit kay A. Ito, 75 tsaka 0, 75. Well, yung tax benefit kay B, 175 tsaka 0, 175. So pag pinag, pinag net mo yan, 100,000 yung difference, which is yung difference ito, 100,000. Doon sila nagkatalo eh, doon sa tax benefit. Okay, so which is better, debtor equity? In this situation, that yeah. <clears throat> what if the company is experiencing non uh, null, null, net operating loss? So, this is a portion of net operating loss. Sila. So, it means walang tax benefit. Correct? Again, kung, kung hindi na get yun, you can replay yung portion sa part 1 in discussion ng cost of ay yung tax benefit. If the company is in net operating loss situation, then there is no tax benefit. Kasi kahit anong gawin mo, kahit ilang sandamakmak na interest ang ipasok mo dyan, hindi niya na mababago yung fact na hindi niya na kayang paliitin yung tax liability mo. Kasi wala na ang tax liability. Wala na yung tax due. So, ano pang papabawa, ano pang papaliitan ng interest expense? So, wala na. So, if, they, if you are in a net operating loss situation, then, indifferent ka dyan. Kasi parehas lang naman yung uh, total cost of debt and equity in company A, company B, as illustrated here. Okay? But if they are in a positive, positive income situation, na uh, the more debt uh, financing, the better for tax purposes. For tax purposes. Okay? I hope my intindihan yan. Let's continue with the slide. Let's go to Next. Taxation on the part of the creditor in debt financing. So it's in this situation, in this um, part of the uh, discussion, i-shift natin ngayon yung point of view. Diba? Kasi kanina tayo yung entity. Tayo yung gustong umutang. Tayo yung gustong tumanggap nung uh, tawag dito, nung investment. Now, i-twist natin ngayon yung kwento. We are now in the position of the creditor. Tayo ngayon yung nagpapautang. Tayo yung nagpapautang. Sa point of view ng nagpo-provide ng pondo, syempre ang ang kikit ang, ang ano mo naman ang consideration mo diyan ay interest income. Now for the uh, most part ng discussion, we always refer to interest expense. And yung interest expense na yan ay uh, merong tax benefit. Now, balik tayo natin yung kwento dahil tayo ay nandoon sa point of view ng kabila, yung creditor. Ano naman ngayon yung kanyang tax imprint? Ano yung kanyang tax uh, consequences? Yan. Una, ano ang tax ng interest income? If that is on bank deposit, it's possible na yan ay subject sa 20% final income tax. Or if it is uh, denominated in foreign currency, it will be subjected to 15% final income tax. This one was receivable. Yung interest income on was receivable is subject to basic income tax. So it's possible na yan ay apata one <clears throat> ng tax 0 to 35%. Long-term deposit, this one, 
if the maturity period is more than five years, or at least five years exempt yan. <clears throat> Seal on long-term investment is also exempt with the same period of five years. Actually, hindi na interest yung pinag-uusapan sa item number four. Again, kasi binenta niya yung instrument. Eh. Sa so, ang income item na pinag-uusapan sa item number four is no longer interest income, but gain on the seal of the long-term investment, which is exempt. So doon tayo sa unang tatlo, kasi ito talaga yung interest, uh, interest income. Now you are making an advice, no? strategic tax management. Isang tao na maraming pera, maghahanap siya ng mga passive income, sa'yo siya napatanong, at ang tanong niya ay tungkol sa tax. Yan. Siyempre, concern siya dun eh. Dadalhin ko tong pera ko sa banko, for example. May tax yun. Or papautang ko tong pera ko. May tax yun. Or ilalong term deposit ko siya. Mm. Siyempre, yung makasali mo may tax na dun. Kung ipipreterminate niya. Yan. So yan, kapag ganyan, siyempre, since income ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, dadalihin mo yung item kung saan siya makatipid. And that's the best advice. Siyempre, again, meron itong mga non-tax consideration. Kanyari, long-term deposit. Siyempre, yun yung exempt. Eh. Advice mo siya, oh, open ka ng long-term deposit with a period of, maturity period of at least five years. Yun yung non-tax consideration mo. Well, meron siyang restriction as to the use of the money. Imagine for five years, hindi mo pwede withdrawin yung pera mo, eh pera mo yun, tapos di mo siya magamit dami. Okay. Ang ano naman dyan, ang benefit niyan is exempt yung, exempt from income tax yung any interest that you will earn on the long-term deposit. Although hindi mo nga siya magamit, limang taon, pero pag kumita ka doon, meron kang exemption na ma-enjoy. So meron siyang non-tax consideration. Pag nasisibable, ayan. Sa anong consideration natin? Depende sa amount siguro. Tandaan mo dito, pero kang portion dito na 20%. Essentially, meron kang point of indifference. Eh. Pero for example, 250 yan. Yung ina-expect mo na interest income ay 250. 250,000. If that is the only income of the taxpayer, kung siya ay kinita sa nasisimable, exempt din yan. Hindi niya kailangan maghintay ng limang taon. Bakit? Kasi using the tax table, the first 250,000 is exempt from income tax. So if the only income of your taxpayer, of your client, will be by way of interest income, and that is a no bubble, then applying the progressive tax table of 0 to 35%, exempt yan from income tax. So that's a better advice kasi walang restriction as to the withdrawal. Unlike long-term long deposit, long-term deposit, limang taon mo hindi mo magagalaw before siya maging exempt. Kasi if gagalawin mo siya or withdrawin mo siya prior to the arrival of the fifth year, then you will be liable for final income tax at the rate of 5%, 12%, or 20%. Well, interesting bank deposit, so ito na lang kung wala talaga siyang ibang gustong gawin, kundi mag-iwan ng pera sa bank, which is not really um, advisable. Pero yun yung trick niya, so we eat, yung kanya kanya buhin niya. Kahit anong advice mo, sabi mo dyan sa bangko, patulogin mo lang yung pera mo dyan, hindi yan productive, etc. etc. Better yet, talihin mo yung pera sa ibang bagay, marketable securities, or sa pag-ibig, ganyan. Open ka ng account sa pag-ibig. Kung, kung ang choice mo lang talaga is between two income items which is subject to final income tax, you advise your client, sabihin mo, might as well uh, foreign currency na lang. Kasi yung interest income mo on your foreign currency deposit, expanded foreign currency deposit unit, ay subject sa final income tax at the rate of 15%. Kasi kung, 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 kung Philippine peso yan, 20% yung final income tax. So if you will be earning 1 million, for example, by way of interest, mas mataas yung babayaran mo kung um, tawag dito, kung peso deposit account mo. So dapat foreign currency deposit unit para 15% lang. So 5% din yun. So if ang interest mo ay 1 million, that's 5%. That's 50,000. Malaki yun, di ba? 
malaking diferensya. Eh, what if billions ang pinag-uusapan natin? Diba? Hindi biro yung 5% na ano natin, na diferensya dyan. Kailangan mo siyang i-consider. Okay? That is interest on bank deposit. Okay? With 20, 15. No, si basic income tax, 0 to 35%. And then long-term deposit exempt. Okay? Mulet. Now, how about investor? So, what's the point of view of investor? Okay. In equity financing, ito, ito yung mga maaari niya i-consider. What if nag-invest siya ng shares niya and then tumataas yung value? Merong share appreciation, share price appreciation. Tumataas yung value ng shares niya. Binabantayan niya palagi araw-araw, uy, pataas ang pataas yung value ng shares niya. Kailan ko pala ito ko yung ibenta. <laughs> Ganun yung iniisip niya eh. Binabantayan niya eh. So, in the meantime, na yan ay share appreciation pa lamang, that is tax exempt. Wala ka pa muna ng tax liability. Magkakaroon ka lang ng tax liability if mabenta mo siya. But in the meantime, na in the meantime pa lang siya, consider it at, as unrealized. Yung pagtaas ng value ng shares mo, unrealized pa lang yan. So, pag nabenta mo siya later on, syempre, you will consider that increase. And we can expect that if you will consider the increase in the value of your shares, it will result into a gain. Yan yung pag-uusapan natin sa items number two and three. Since ibibenta mo na siya, what if, anong, ano ang magiging tax liability if you decide to sell your shares of stocks? That would depend if the shares are listed or traded in the local stocks exchange. In which case, ang tax liability will be 15% of the capital gains tax. 15% capital gains tax on net capital gains. That is by way of final income tax. And the or so number three, share of stocks binenta pa rin, but this time listed siya or traded in the local stocks exchange. In which case, magbayad siya ng stock transaction tax at the rate of 6 tenths of 1% based on the selling price. Okay. Essentially, wala. 1% na nga lang. Tapos free action mo pa yung 1% na yun. 6 tenths na lang ng 1% ang babayaran niya na. Tapos. Tandaan lang na yung pinakaiba ng 2 and 3. Yung 2 is computed based on capital gain. So, ibig sabihin kung nalugi siya dun sa transaction, then wala siyang kailangang bayaran na tax na 15%. Kasi lugi ka nga dun sa transaction eh. So, walang basihan yung computation. 15% is computed based on net capital gains. Unlike in number 3, the computation, yung 6 tenths of 1%, is computed based on the selling price. It does not consider yung purchase price or yung cost, which may be higher or lower than the selling price. Meaning, in situation number 3, maaari na yung um, transaction, yung sale transaction, will result into a gain or a loss. Siyempre, kung, kung yung purchase price mo, or yung selling price mo rather ay mas mataas dun sa purchase price mo, may gain. Siyempre, kung mas mawaba yung selling price mo dun sa purchase price mo, may loss. Okay. But in situation number three, where the shares are listed or traded in the local stock exchange, any gain or loss is disregarded. Wala na tayong pakialam doon. Bakit? Because that law provides that the computation of the tax will be based on the selling price. Without this, without re, without regard to the purchase price, so kahit na may gain ka dito, kahit na may loss ka dito, you will be liable for the uh, stock transaction tax under Section 127 of the tax code, six tenths of one percent of the selling price. Unlike number two, fifteen percent capital gains tax on net capital gains, meaning if you have loss number two will not apply. Okay? Number four, dividends. Siyempre, bilang investor in equity financing, meron kang dividends nakikita eh. What would be the effect? Ano ba yung taxability ng dividends na yun? 
final income tax at the rate of 10%. Now we have here a negotiation. Ayan. Sabi ng corporation, oh, Mr. Stockholder, meron kami i-declare na dividends and you are entitled to receive 1 million. The question now here is, do you want it? Do you want to receive it lump sum or on installment? Yung tanong niyo, lump sum or installment? So you exercise na ngayon yung negotiation and you will put your client in a better position. <clears throat> okay. Let us pull out our Excel file. So. So, mulipot yung combination. Bakit? Kasi natapos ko na siya, wala pa lang recording. Nakakainit. Ay, nako. Anyway, haba nun, wala pa lang recording yun. <laughs> Tanggalin muna natin yung ibang portion. Uh, hide ko na lang using White ink. Yeah, no wala. Yeah, yan yung dalawang options. Oh. <laughs> Ulit. Yan yung dalawang options. In total, yan 1 million. Whether ilang sum mo siya or installment mo siya. Um, so, matatal yan 1 million din. 1 million ngayon or 1 million pero unti-untiin natin to 200,000. Yun yung offer dun sa stockholder. Anong gusto mo dito sa dalawa? So, papasok na yun yung negotiating mo. Um, hmm. Kung hanggang dyan lang yung ano mo, yung pag-iisip mo, isipin mo lang yung total. Uh, indifferent ka. Diba? Pag sabi indifferent, kahit ano, lang sa installment. Kahit ano, 100, para, para sa 1 million yun. Ganyan yung isipin. Okay, pero, let us not think that way. Mga tax managers tayo, kaya may mga ibang bagay tayong i-consider. Una, applicable tax. Kung ibibigay mo ng buo, yung 1 million, meron yung final income tax at rate of 10%. Correct? <clears throat> Which gives, gives us a net of 900,000. E pag in-installment po ba, ano ang mangyayari? Ganun din. Final income tax at the rate of 10%. So, ibig sabihin, ang net mo per year, 180. Ha? Kung 180 per year, ang total niya, 900 din. Ayun, taba ba? Tignan niya sa 900 din. So, gano'n na gano'n naman. Hindi wala na namang indifferent na naman ako. Ah, kasi after ko pala bayaran yung final income tax or ma-withhold yung final income tax, gano'n pa rin. Yung net ko, kapag nilangasam ko siya 900, kapag in-installment ko siya 900 pa rin. Again, tax manager style dito, meron yung diferensya. Saan papasok yung diferensya? Present value. Correct. So, titignan yung computation dito. Present value ko siya. So, yung present value, 900,000 to be received one year after ay 8181.82. Itong mga to, yan, present value, padagdag ng padagdag ng, ng 0.1 sa taas of 1.1. Yan, dalawa. Tatlo, lima. Yan. Yan yung kanilang present value. Pag tinotal mo to, Yan, pag tinotal mo yan, 682.3. Ang present value nito, 818, ito, 682. So, mas maganda na ma-receive niya na, o kung kayo ito, kung kayo nasa sitwasyon, i-insist ninyo na ibigay niyo na ngayon yung 1 million. Net of the 100,000 final tax, 900. Bigay niyo na yung 900 sa akin ngayon kaysa utay-utay niya siya ng 180. Kasi, considering the time value of money, yan, ang present value ng mga yan, ngayon ay 682. 
3.41.6 ito lamang. Uh, I'm in better, uh, I will be in a better situation if you will pay me now or, uh, or at the end of this year yung 900,000. Kasi if you pay me now, syempre ito yung walang present value. Now siya eh. 900,000 yung computation natin. But to be consistent with the computation that as just assume na by the end of the year, ibibigay yung dividend. So, mag-iisang taon, meron kong isang taon na factor for this one. For the lump sum. Anyway, whether that kahit sa beginning ng year yan or end ng year yan, it is better if the dividends will be given in lump sum. Isang bigay na. Again, that is the tax tax aspect. Meron tayong mga non-tax consideration. What if the rin ng company pasaway naman ito? Kailangan ng company yung kailangan ng korporasyon yung punto kaya nga inuunti-unti. Baka maging, ano, maging adverse yung tingin sa ng mga board of directors. Ito, EPAL dong isang to. Dapat installment yan. Hiningi agad ng buo. Parang kontrabida ka na ngayon. Kontrabida ka na ngayon sa kumpanya. Dahil ginusto mong mabuo agad yung ano, dividends mo. Uh, tinanggihan mo pa yung offer nila na mag-install mo. Tinanggihan yung installment offer ng ito. Napaka-demanding naman ito. No? Demanding ka pa nga. Yan yung mga non-tax consideration natin. Siyempre, walang, walang value. Wala kang kukumpute yun doon. Anong kukumpute yun doon? Ano yung value ng pagkainis? Or anong value ng pagiging demanding? Wala. So, dito lang tayo magkoconcentrate sa kaya natin compute yun. And between a lump sum payment and installment payment, it's better if the dividends will be received in lump sum. Yung panghuli ay liquidating dividends. Ang liquidating dividends ay tax as capital gain or capital loss and it's subject to holding period. So yung liquidating dividends, ito yung dividends na ibibigay na sa mga stockholders upon the liquidation of the corporation. Kaya nga siya na liquidating dividends. Now, ano titignan mo dito? Yung amount of the uh, dividend, yung liquidating dividend, Minus yung cost. Ibig sabihin, magkano niya binili? Magkano yung investment niya? So for example, 10 years ago, nag-invest ako ng 100,000. O ngayon, nag-decide yung corporation na mag-liquidate. Binigyan sa akin ng uh, 250,000. Okay. Yun yung liquidating dividend ko. O, yung liquidating dividend ko ay 250, pero hindi taxable lahat yun. Bakit? Kasi pwede kong ibawas yung original investment ko ng 100,000 giving me a gain of 150,000. Yeah. That gain is considered as a capital gain. Capital gain siya. Is it subject to capital gain? Tax no. Capital gain subject to basic income tax. Not capital gain tax. Although it is treated, hindi naman kasi lahat ng capital gain ay capital gain tax ang punta. Okay, so capital gain ito, subject sa basic income tax, so which is 0 to 35%. Kung wala siyang ibang income item, itong 150,000 na yan ay exempt from income tax considering na hindi siya lumagpas ng 250,000. If this will be the other way around, yung liquidity dividend ay 100,000, yung cost ay 250, meron siya ngayon negative 150,000. Ano itong negative 150,000 na yan? Capital loss. Ano kung gagawin sa capital loss? You can claim that as deduction but only up to the extent of capital gain. Yan yung nasa tax 1 natin. Tayo ay nag-aaral ng capital loss at capital gain. Ibig sabihin kung kahit billion-billion yung capital loss mo na yan, kung piso lang ang capital gain mo, then out of the billion-billion na capital loss, piso lang din ang pwede mong i-recognize as capital loss. Although we have this concept of capital net capital loss carry over. Pero hindi natin masyadong papansin na yun. Ang punto natin dito, yung capital gain at capital loss. 
nakalagay subject to holding period if you are an individual. If you are a corporate uh, investor, hindi masyadong magmamatter yung holding period na yan kasi hindi siya applicable. <laughs> Walang holding period pagdating sa mga corporate taxpayer. So ang meron lang holding period ay yung mga uh, individual investors. Ano yung ng holding period? Ano yan? Uh, may dalawang uri ng holding period na long term at short term. Pag long term, Long term ang holding period if 12 months mo, uh, long, more, more than more than 12 months mo um, maintain yung investment. Short term ang holding period if hindi ka lumagpas ng 12 months. Sakong 12 months ka lang pababa. Short term yung holding period mo. Ano yung effect? If ang holding period mo ay long term, then only 50% of the capital gain or the capital loss will be recognized. If short-term yan, 100% of the capital gain or the capital loss will be recognized. On the liquidity dividend, di ba? Capital gain and capital loss. So if ang investment ko ay 10 years ago, 100,000, ito yun. 10 years ago yan. Then ngayon, nag-liquidate siya at binigyan ako ng liquidity dividend in the amount of 250 May capital gain ako ng 150000 And that will be subjected to the holding period. Bakit? Kasi long term siya. Bakit long term? Eh, 10 years eh. 10 years yung tinakbo ng investment mo. So 50% lang ang um, magiging taxable. Eh. So kung 150 yan, ang ire-report o magiging taxable lang will be 75 thousand fifty percent of one hundred fifty thousand and in fact if that is the only income item of that taxpayer yung seventy five thousand and applying the tax table will not be subjected to any form of tax since hindi nga siya ng two hundred fifty thousand na kung nag invest ka lang five months ago one hundred thousand then siguro malas ka kasi nag invest ka lang nag liquidate na yung company Pero at least 250 yung binigay sa inyo. So you will, that, that is a gain, ay, gain of, ang saan tayo? Gain of 150 treated as capital gain subject to holding period. Anong holding period mo? Short term lang. Bakit short term? Eh, five months ago lang nangyari yung investment eh. Nag-liquidate na ngayon. Dahil hindi siya lumagpas ng isang taon, 100% of the capital gain will be taxable. So yung 150, muo, taxable yun. So medyo pwede mong paglaruan tong uh, tawag dito holding period. So for example gain yan. Uh, pwede mong negotiate na wala pa pong one year yung aking investment. Hmm? Ay hindi ko you need to liquidate. Pero isang buwan na lang naman na. Isang buwan na lang naman. Mag mag lalagpas na ng one year yung investment ko. O bakit mo kailangan i-insist yun? Ano yun? Kasi po, pag nag-liquidate kayo ngayon, short term lang po yung aking, uh, magiging short term po yung aking capital gain and I will be taxable na 100%. I'm interested na maging long term siya. So kung mag-liquidate po kayo, more than one month pa, hintay lang tayo ng more than one month, maging long term na po yung aking capital gain in which case 50% lang ang magiging tax sa buhay. Eh malaki yan. So if you will be paying tax in the ang like ito 150. Eh hindi pala um, absorb na pala siya. Pero may may impact. What if by the billions? No by the billions yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. So kahit 50% lang yan napakalaking tipid niya for the taxpayer. So you should know. Okay. Loss on worthless and or uh, worthless debt and or equity. So that pa utang ka, meron kang receivable. <clears throat> or nag-invest ka, meron kang shares. And then later on, itong receivable mo siya shares na yun, they became worthless. Worthless. In fact, meron tayong concept na ng right of di ba? Of receivable. Yung shares ka nandiyan, pwede mo rin yung i-write off. 
So, lungkot ka ngayon. Ilungkot ka ngayon. Worthless ng receivable ko, worthless na yung shares ko. So, ang kailangan mong gawin kapag worthless na yung mga yan, yan ay i-write off mo. Kasi hindi yan pwedeng i- hindi, hindi yan pwedeng magtuloy sa libro. Diba? May requirement tayo. Hindi ko alam sa hindi <laughs> ko alam na sa financial accounting. Pero may requirement tayo na dapat yung asset meron kang expectation ng future uh, economic benefit. Diba? Kung, kung worthless na yung receivable, alam mo hindi siya makapalekta. Yung shares ay worthless na rin. You don't expect na meron pang future economic benefit. So, nadi-disqualify siya sa definition ng asset. Kaya tatanggalin mo siya. As asset. Kung wala namang value, tanggalin mo na. So, sa, in- sa income statement, no? nakakalungkot siya. Kasi lost siya. Pero, for tax purposes, ayos yan. Maganda yan. Bakit? Ba't siya positive? Pagdating sa taxation. O paulit-ulit natin na binabanggit, coming from the first lecture video involving financing, financing decisions, nabanggit doon na ang mga expenses or losses ay maganda sa taxation. Bakit? Kasi pag meron kang loss, for example, right of mong receivable, right of mong na yung shares, recognize ka ng loss. Anong mangyayari pag nirecognize mo yung loss? it will increase the allowed deduction. And if it will increase the allowed deduction, it will decrease the taxable net income. And if it will decrease the taxable net income, it will decrease the tax due. So that's good. Diba? Mas mababa yung tax na pabayaran mo dahil meron kang loss on worthless debt or worthless equity. Parang, sil- parang silver lining na lang siya. Kumbaga. But napaka-negative ng situation, naging worthless na yung debt or yung equity hinanapan mo ko ng something positive. And what is that something positive? Okay lang na loss yan or work, dahil worthless na siya. Meron na tax benefit eh. <laughs> Meron daw tax benefit. Ang nakakalungkot dito is nasa net operating loss ka. Dahil kung nasa net operating loss ka, kahit anong dagdag mo sa allow deductions, kahit ilang loss ang ilagay mo dyan, wala nang effect. Kasi wala nang tax benefit na madaderive kasi nga, nasa negative side na yung um, company. Okay? So yung loss on worthless and or worthless debt or equity can be recognized either as ordinary loss or capital loss. Ordinary loss if you are habitually engaged no, in the trading of that instruments or equity instrument. Kung baga ito yung produkto mo, ito yung pinag, ito yung Uh, kabuhayan mo. No? Ito, ito yung kabuhayan. We are dealing in that securities or equity securities. Kaya since ito yung kabuhayan mo, ito yung araw-araw mong ginagawa, ordinary siya sa'yo. So kung sakali merong worthless debt or equity, then ordinary loss lang siya. Kapag capital loss, isolated transaction. You are not engaged. You are not habitually engaged in the trading of debt or equity securities. Interested ka lang talaga. Pautangin tong X company or mag-invest sa Y company. In that case, capital asset yan kasi you are not expected naman na bibili, bibiling ko to para ibenta ko lang siya ulit. Hindi ganun. Hindi yun yung tingin mo dyan. Talagang isolated lang. E may extra akong pera eh. Why not magpabans ako? or magpa equity equity financing ako. May extra naman eh, di ba? Just so happen na lugi kaya naging worthless sila. Kapag ganyan, you are not habitually engaged, capital loss yan. So ano nga yung pinagkaiba? Ordinary loss na capital loss. Nabanggit na yung nature ng capital loss kanina. Capital losses are deductible only up to the extent of capital gains. To the point na kung wala kang capital gains, wala kang capital loss na mararecognize. Yun yung palaging limit sa capital loss eh. Kung magkano yung capital gain. Kung may piso kang capital gain, sige, capital loss mo piso rin. Kung may limang piso kang capital gain, go, limang piso hanggang limang piso lang din yung capital loss mo. Pero kung tatlong piso lang yung capital loss mo, huwag mong limang piso eh. Tatlang, tatlong piso lang. Siyempre, kung ano yung actual or the limit, whichever is the word. 
Okay? Unlike ordinary loss, ang ordinary loss, deductible in full. Kasi ordinary loss siya. So kung meron kang ordinary loss sa 1 million, walang magbipigil sa'yo na mag-claim ng 1 million. Provided na, na syempre, yun nga, habitually engaged ka. Yun yung kailangan patunayan. You are habitually engaged in that kind of activity. Trading of debt and equity securities. Pag capital loss, wala. You are not engaged in that. So, mahirap patunayan. Siyempre, in a better situation yung mga nasa ordinary loss kasi deductible ng buo eh. Diba? Hindi nila kailangan maghanap ng ordinary gain. Basta may ordinary loss sila. Deductible in full yan. Unlike capital loss, subject to the holding period. 50% maaari pa. Tapos subject pa the loss limitation rule. Ano yung loss limitation rule? You can only deduct capital loss up to the extent of the capital gain. Eh kung walang capital gain, hindi eh, wala rin capital loss. May hirap pang capital loss na ito. Diba? So it not, it's much better if it is classified as ordinary loss. Pero yun nga, hindi naman siya sa kagustuhan mo. Yung classification ng debt or ng equity, whether ordinary or capital, ay nasa nature ng transaction. Okay? Okay. In net operating loss, uh, kanina nabanggit na natin ito, in net operating loss, nag-aaris yan if ang capital gain mo ay mas maliit sa capital, ay not capital gain, mali. Kung ang gross income mo ay mas maliit sa allowed deduction. So this will give rise to the recognition of net operating loss. Saka na tayo mag-move on muna. Ano muna yung net operating loss? Yan nga. Yung expenses mo, mas mataas na sa gross income. And if an entity is already in a net operating loss, nasa net operating loss na siya, nawawala na lang sa isa yung tax benefit on deductions. Yan, nawawala siya lang sa isa. Eh. Bakit? Eh, kahit na taasan ko pa ng taasan yung allowed deductions ko, since nasa net operating loss side na nga ako, wala nang tax benefit. Negative lang siya ng negative. Eh. Wala nang tax benefit ang doon. Okay. So yun yung isang aspect na alam na natin. Under the tax code, itong net operating loss na yan, ay hindi, lang tum hindi pa tumitigil doon. Kaya pa tayong tinatawag na null ko. Carry over. Net operating loss carry over. So dahil hindi, wala ng tax benefit on the period na ikaw ay net operating loss, kapag ikaw ay net operating loss carry over for the next three years, then magkakaroon ka ng tax benefit. Bakit? Kasi null ko acts similar with allowed deductions. Para siyang allowed deductions. Ibig sabihin, ang effect ng net operating loss carry over for the next three years will be to reduce your taxable net income. So, you can look at net operating loss as a good thing. Again, silver lining ito. Net operating loss, lugi na nga. Negative na. Negative na yung iniisip mo. Lugi eh. Net operating loss. Pero yung silver lining dyan, sige, lugi tayo ngayon. But we can carry it over for the next three years. In which case, hindi tayo kailang magbayad. Maaari, possible, na hindi magbayad ng tax. Kasi i-offset lang ng net operating loss yung taxable income. So for example, year one mo, meron kang net operating loss na uh, 300,000. Bakit? Kasi yung gross income mo ay 700 while your allowed deductions ay 1 million. O talaga meron kang net operating loss na 300,000. At wala ng tax benefit dyan. Alam na ninyo kung bakit. Okay. Ano pang mapapala mo dyan? In the subsequent year, if, if, if the entity will have taxable net income in the amount of 100,000, wala siyang tax na babayaran. Bakit? Kasi i-apply niya ito. I-carry over niya. So, babawas niya yung 100 dito, ang taxable net income niya, zero. So, wala siyang tax na babayaran. Next year ulit, kung meron tax, siyang taxable net income na, let's say, 700,000, hindi niya kailangan mag-compute ng tax ng buo na sa 700. Kasi ganun siyang mababawas na null ko in the amount of 200. Eh, pa 200 na lang. Kasi nagamit mo na nung previous year yung 100. Kaya 200 talaga may iwan dito. 
So yung tax niya will be computed now at 500,000. In year 3, wala na. Wala nang null ko in year 3. Bakit? Fully exhausted na yung null ko. Ginamit niya na year 1, year 2. Eh 300,000 lang yan. Yung 100 ginamit ng year 1, yung 200 ginamit ng year 2. So wala na. Wala nang null ko pagdating ng year number 3. Ano pang point natin dito? Ano pang pwedeng gamitin sa null? Ano pang meron sa null? Um, actually, sa next topic natin, ang null ko ay pwedeng bilihin. Bibilihin mo yung null ko. <laughs> Pwede. I-absorb mo yung null ko ng iba. Bakit? Ba't mo naman gagawin yun? Kasi kung ma-absorb mo yung null ko ng iba, ibang entity, pwede mong gamitin yung net operating loss na yun kung meron kang future tax liability. So yun yung nature ng net operating loss. Medyo pa, pa, pabalibaliktad siya. Good siya, bad siya, good siya, bad siya. Siyempre, ayaw mo naman na loss yung operations. Pero sa point of view ng isang tax manager, okay yan. Okay yung net, net operating loss na yan. Kasi I can use that to offset yung aking future uh, taxable net income na it is also even possible na wala akong bayaran na tax, any form of tax in my future uh, years because of that net operating loss carryover. Tandaan, tatlong taon lang yan. Except for 2020 and 2021 because of the Bayanihan Act. Na Bayanihan to heal as one and Bayanihan to recover as one. Yung mga nol ko coming from the years 2020 and 2021 can be carried over a period of five years. Yan. Limang taon. Pero yung regular na nol ko, tatlong taon na. Tatlong taon mo siyang i-carry over. <clears throat> Okay, so that's it for financing decisions. Actually, may mga topics pa rin dito that we will touch on the future kasi since financing decisions siya, so for example, that next topic will be um, next topic, product development. Yan. So yung product development, syempre, may papasok dyan na konsepto ng uh, ano yung ginamit mo to finance their fund, uh, product development. What if you yung subsidiary na nagkakandak ng product development is under in net operating loss. Anong pwede mong gawin? Yan. So, hopefully, no, yung meron tayo na intindihan dito sa mga lecture videos natin and I'm, I apologize kung napotol siya bigla and I also I apologize dahil medyo late na rin itong ginagawa ko. No? Um, I will not explain dito sa YouTube dahil public siya. I will just explain kung anong nangyayari. Okay, but in the meantime, thank you for listening and goodbye. See you in the next lecture video.